Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. It's me Deepak George and today we start with the first unit in your new syllabus. Anyway, the first unit in your new syllabus is applications of differentiation. But before we move on to application, we have to make sure our foundation is good. So let's just take a quick recap of the basics that you learned in class 11 and class 12. The first question is, what do you mean by dy by dx? When you started learning calculus, I'm sure that you learned functions and later limits and continuity and then later differentiation. So, the answer to this question, what is dy by dx, starts from function. So let me ask you, what do you mean by a function in mathematics? You might have a mathematical definition, but the casual definition is, function is a mathematical tool which is used to convert real life scenarios into a mathematical form. For example, I want to predict the mark of a student based on some parameter, maybe his height, maybe his weight, maybe his IQ, anything. I want to express the mark of a student in terms of some parameter which I am going to study. And normally what we do is, we end up writing, let's say, mark is equal to some function of IQ. So it's kind of like saying the input is IQ and the output is mark. Like that, another person wants to study how the humidity in a particular place depends on the amount of carbon monoxide or maybe some other compound, maybe nitrogen. I just made that example. But someone wants to study the humidity in relation with some compound which is present in the atmosphere. So he or she will also try to express the scenario as a function. So when someone asks what is a function, the casual definition is it is a mathematical way of writing real life scenarios. Now look at this. Functions can be converted into graphs because we want to analyze functions. Once more let me tell you, there is a real life scenario which we want to analyze and that has been converted into a function form. Now, we want to analyze the function and one of the method that we use is graphing. But the problem is graphing has a lot of limitations. So, graphing is not always feasible. And in the 16th century, two mathematicians, Newton and Leibniz, they came up with a very good idea. And that is our calculus. They came up with an awesome mathematical method which eliminates graphing but still we will be able to analyze the function at every input point. And that method is called calculus. And as I told you, two mathematicians are credited for that. That is Newton and Leibniz. Anyway, Newton started with the derivative side and Leibniz started with the integration side. And the beautiful notations like dy by dx, the integral symbol, are all contributions of our Leibniz. Anyway, what they found is, they found a very easy method to analyze the graph of a function without the graph. That means they developed a method which will analyze the function without the graph. But 
to make you understand let's imagine the graph of the function looks like this and when we do a basic analysis we are interested in a few things and that you have already learned in class 11 and class 12 that is is the graph increasing is the graph decreasing have we reached a maximum point and did we reach a minimum point so look at this we are interested in a few things is the graph increasing is it decreasing have we reached a maximum point is the graph bending downwards is it bending upwards etc etc and the answer to all these questions can be found using our derivative let me brief it once more we might be interested in a real life scenario so mathematically it is a norm that we convert the real life situation into a function form it is not always possible but normally we do that that's all tool to convert real life scenarios into a mathematical form now if you can analyze the function that means you are analyzing your real life experiment the experiment that you are conducting and one of the best methods that people love is graphing but graphing has its own limitation graphing will not give you accurate result and graphing is sometimes very very tough especially when you have a multivariable function it might be even impossible so derivative is an awesome mathematical tool which talks about the function and hence about the graph and hence about the real life scenario that you are analyzing and a few basic questions that we always want the answer is is the graph increasing is it decreasing what is the maximum possible value what is the minimum possible value is there a bend in the graph is there any portion without bend etc etc and all these questions are answered by dy by dx because this derivative is actually the gradient of the tangent at any point so basically our Newton and Leibniz they found a shortcut method to find the gradient of the tangent look at this this is a differentiable graph means you will be able to draw the tangent and measure its gradient gradient means slope you might be familiar with the notation for slope m so once more let me tell you if this graph or the function is differentiable it means you will be able to draw tangent at each and every point and you will be able to measure the gradient of the tangent and that is exactly our dy by dx so dy by dx is nothing but the gradient of the tangent now look at this we have a graph and you will be able to see that if the graph is differentiable I mean if the function is differentiable then you will be able to draw tangent at each and every point and you'll notice one more thing the gradient of tangent at any increasing part will be positive you take it as a challenge you draw an increasing graph you try to make tangents at any point in the increasing part you'll be amazed to see that the gradient or the slope will be positive so look at the advantage you calculate dy by dx if it turns out to be positive we know that the graph is increasing and similarly you take any decreasing part of the graph any graph which is differentiable but it is in decreasing mode 
may be the temperature at the night after sunset we know the temperature keeps on going down and down and down and if that graph or the function is differentiable you'll see that the tangent will give you a negative gradient because the angle will be more than 90 and that creates a negative gradient or the negative slope by the way gradient and slope are the same stuff it's denoted by m so look at that if the derivative is negative we come to know that there is a decrease so if an economist is designing a function related to the profit in the market they will be able to understand oh okay after this particular point the gradient is coming down now let me tell you one more thing suppose we have a graph which looks like this which is of course differentiable can you look at the maximum point or the minimum point these two points have tangents parallel to the x-axis they are called horizontal tangents so whenever you have a maximum or minimum the tangent will be parallel to the x-axis or the gradient will be zero or our derivative will be zero so once more let me brief this mathematicians or anyone who does research they try to express their real life experiments which they conduct in a mathematical form and one of the tools used for this purpose is our function anyway to make things simple i am considering a function in one variable now drawing a graph and analyzing the function is an awesome method but it is very complicated and graphs never give you accurate result and when you have more than one variable even graphing is not a good idea so we have an awesome tool in mathematics which came from the 16th century and that is our dy by dx and you have to understand that derivative is nothing but the gradient of the tangent the slope of the tangent and the three things that you have to understand is if the derivative is positive then you should understand oh the graph is in increasing mode that means the function output values are going above above or more 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 and when dy by dx equal to zero you have to understand that we are at a maximum point or a minimum point they call it the stationary point and when dy by dx is negative we are able to understand that the values the function output is coming down okay and i'll end this video with one more thing that is the second order derivative the second order derivative gives you a rough idea about the bend in the graph what does it talk about the bend in the graph maybe you're not used to the word bending in graph because in your class 11 and class 12 book you might have used the word concave upwards and concave downwards but personally i like the word bending in a graph because it makes us understand very easily for example i can see the graph is bending down and then the graph is bending upwards and actually this talks about d by dx of dy by dx that is it tells us how the gradient is changing with respect to x now if a graph is bent downwards the second order derivative will be negative if the graph is bent upwards the second order derivative will be positive and of course there will be a point without any bend come on think about it you are bending down, 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 down and then you are going up. That means there might be a point without bend. And if there is a point like that, the second order derivative will be zero and you call it the point of inflection. The derivatives are very, very useful in analyzing a function which actually is connected to some real life experiment. If you like these videos, please do support us. I'll be back with more videos like this. In the next video, 
we are going to learn about the basic differentiation. It's exactly the same thing that you learned in class 11 and 12 because I know some students are not that confident with the differentiation techniques. So we are going to do a basic revision that will be product rule, chain rule, etc. etc. And I'll be back very soon with that video. So till then my friends, bye.